Good morning. I've just moved the bull and his heifers onto our very flat little section here. Lovely, lovely morning this morning. I just want to show you what they're eating here. So this is a success story for regenerative grazing, the principles of which we try to follow as closely as possible here. Um, this hilltop was completely cleared of soil for a horse arena. And it was down to the clay and and then a whole load of weeds grew. The horses, we didn't have horses. So um, we allowed it to grow back. And initially it was just sparse weeds, thistles, and then followed by a forest of gorse. And that continued for years. And I kept putting the cattle up, getting them to eat, getting them to fertilize as they go. And now look at this. This is thick plantain. Um, even at this time of year, we still have some flowering plants. It's just beautiful. Lots of different items, not just clover, but you've got some vetch here and all sorts of bits and bobs. So it just shows that you can start with absolutely nothing and through correct management or rotational grazing and using the cattle, using a good type of cow that will eat anything, properly eat anything. Um, you can improve the land and of course they're benefiting from it now as well. This is a nice little heifer, now she's obviously just been on heat. You can see from all the markings on her. Hello! 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 <laughs> Let's go see the rest of them. But this is proper, lovely plantain right up my welly boot. Just super. I guess we'll have all sorts of other plants that would be probably considered to be weeds on a high production, high output dairy farm. But here I like the way that these animals can browse on lots of different plant materials. Another gorgeous hair. Look at her. And the bowl. what's going on with this young girl. Charm. I think he likes her. So this bull is three years old and the heifer is 15 months old and you just saw a lovely piece of body language there, communication with each other. He is very much the boss in this group. She's seven and she is sort of the boss cow of this group of little heifers. But she too defers to the bull. He's just got to go around repeatedly checking the girls, making sure he gets the absolute right time. You can see some mud on his side and that's where when a heifer is coming on heat or a cow is coming on heat they will try to mount before they will stand to be mounted and this is what's happened here. He has been mounted by the, um, the females. It's all very consensual for a bull. <laughs> there they go. So this bull's got quite a bit more growth left to him, another year's growing, really. Um, and he'll continue to put on weight after that as well. And this is her baby.
calf is also sired by this bull last year and I am extremely impressed with this bull. This has a lot of potential. This is a pole bull. And he's very nice. Um, so he's 12 weeks old now. Great size for a 12 week old calf. Cattle are such curious creatures and they will find something to explore or muck about with. Um, and here we go, a set of tyres that I used to harrow this field before we purchased a proper harrow. We strung up a bunch of four tyres and a gate to pull behind and this spreads the manure very nicely. It exposes any parasites that might be in the manure, um, are exposed to the UV rays and killed and it spreads the manure evenly over the field, so it works very well. And this heifer here is called Clover. She too is sired by Charles. So join me now as we go over the other side of the valley to move the other mob of cows and their bull. So we're going over, over there, that far hillside over there. Such a magical place to live. I really love it. This is one of my favourite areas under these trees here. Cattle love to sit under here too in the summer. You can hear a grey warbler there. We're just on the path around to the next valley and I've got a few trees, a few branches on the fence so I'll just quickly sort that out. We rely heavily on our electricity, works wonders. That's an easy fix. The pink ribbon there indicates that there is a bait station or a trap. I can't actually see the bait station. That's for possums anyway, to protect the native bush. I've pulled these twigs over this side of the fence just because gravity will push them back if I put them on the other side of the fence. So maybe I'll clear those up later. Let's continue. So this is where we'll be moving the cattle today, into this valley here. It's quite rocky, so the management plan with this is to keep the cattle off as much as possible, so they will only be over here for a day or two. And it's got nothing to do with how much grass there is, but just the care of the land. Nice to see some dead gore. Maybe they can crush it for me. Okay, we're on the far hilltop across from the valley and over there you can see the bull with his heifers, mostly mob. 
adjust. Let's move the next lot. This could be quite interesting actually because the bulls will be able to see each other rather than just hear each other. So it could be quite a noisy few days. <laughs> Well, there's obviously plenty of food here because they just don't want to move. Even the bull, oh dear, who's sitting below me there, can't even bother to get up. But I want to leave them just to rest the land. Some lovely cow getting into the gorse there. Well, there's a bit of movement. This is a lovely patch of perennial ryegrass we've got here and some clover and we really only find this perennial ryegrass on the hilltops because this grass needs very high fertility. Um, and you can distinguish it from anything else by the lovely sheen. Now this we have not planted, this is has grown here by itself and it's probably very well suited to our farm so I'd like to continue to have this grow. Quite different grasses on the slopes. We will have Yorkshire fog, coach grasses, and plenty of other <laughs> rubbish. But these cattle thrive on this rough stuff. So yes, they have a very rare treat when they get to the top of a hill and have delicious rye grass. It's the most nutritious grass, high production grass, um, sort of like the thoroughbred of grasses as opposed to cattle are through and they found a very sweet patch of grass there by the looks of it. There's the bull, doesn't seem to be that much activity this morning. So we're approaching three weeks of the bull being out with his cows, which is one full cycle. A cow cycle is average of 21 days. So you would expect all of the cows to have been served by now. Actually, having said that, the way this cow is standing here, I'll just zoom in on her. Her tail position and also the fact that she's quite empty, she doesn't look as full as the rest, indicate that she's been very busy with the bull. the bull. So in terms of regenerative farming, we rotationally graze and to encourage these good quality grasses and clovers, we harrow when it, well, when we can get over here that is. And we don't overgraze and the cows will fertilise as they go. A, a few years ago we put lime on everywhere and so that should be having maximum effect now. As plants respire, so they photosynthesise and respire, they produce carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide dissolves in the waters in the soil and turns the soil acidic. So that's why you have to keep adding lime to keep the ideal pH in your soil.
lovely bull calf there. And I think the other bull will have noticed this movement. The bull in the group on the hilltop over there is the dominant bull. And I think this is mostly due to his age. He's three years old and this fellow here is two. He's six months younger. Now, the other bull is also heavier and more muscular. However, this bull, this bull will, I believe, end up larger than the other one. Probably by as much as 200 kilos. He'll be a much taller bull, probably heavier. The bull on the hilltop over there is far more muscled and has better carcass traits, but just won't end up quite as large framed. He will end up at a frame score probably four, and this bull here will be a frame score six at the end. We'll measure that when we put him through the yards. It's quite easy to do on hip heights. You can see he's got the tiny little scab horns. He's a polled bull, and those are called scars, and they're fake horns or scab horns, and that's all they'll do. They'll come to nothing. He's very messy because he's been so busy with the cows. <laughs> and he's probably very hungry. We'll leave him to it. Another lovely day. I just have to show you this behind me. This is a thick forest of gorse. And we spray for gorse because there's no other way of getting rid of it. Not successfully and not reliably. We do actually have one of our cows does nibble the growing tips off the gorse. However, it makes absolutely no dent in the sheer tonnage that seems to be able to grow. So yes, so we spray and you can see there's some other weeds popping up underneath. We'll spray those too and the cattle will push through, snap those dead bits off, open that area up so that the light can get to the floor, get to the grasses. The grasses will have lovely deep roots and in fact the weeds that are growing there right now will have lovely root system to hold everything in place while the grass establishes itself properly. And once there's grass we can use it as rotationally graze, get the cattle in, get them fertilising and improving the soil um, and keeping the light to the grasses so you get good ground cover. We don't want any bare soil. So this is normal, it looks a mess, but that will very quickly change into nice green grass. I can hear them following me. On the top of the other hill I was just talking about the perennial rye grass, the thoroughbred grass, the high performance grass that offers the best nutrition for the cattle but also in turn likes high fertility. We only get it growing on the hilltops where there is lots of fertility where the cows have laid their cow pats everywhere and it's good sun levels. 
There's seed, there's perennial ryegrass seed everywhere on our farm. The cattle will eat the grasses and deposit the seeds in their manure. Here we have some. You can see it's nice and shiny in amongst some very rough stuff. So as the fertility of the entire farm improves, we'll see more of this popping up on the hillsides, which will be fantastic. And it just shows us that the land is improving and the fertility of the soil is improving. And the cattle are working for us. They trample weeds, they spread fertiliser and they spread the grass seed as they go. It's very worthwhile. So thank you very much for joining me again and watching me move these beautiful beasts to their next grazing area. <laughs> They're quite vocal. It's a lovely day, clear sky, nice in the valley there. We'll leave them to it. Until next time.